Death, the end, the harvester of souls, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, together with war, pestilence, and back pain. The card that's guaranteed to strike fear into the hearts of those with little knowledge of the tarot. But what's the full story? We'll be finding out all about this rather slender looking fellow after our weekly dose of foolishness. The Fool's Journey. <laughs> Once the fool leaves the hanged man, well, hanging, he next finds himself wandering into a war-torn battlefield. It reminded him of the weekend he spent in Wolverhampton. Riding across the scene is a fellow who looks like he's taken his diet a little too seriously. Greetings and salutations, fool. Ah, I'm gonna die. I can't afford to die. Have you seen the price of coffins? Fear not, fool, for I have not come to harm thee. Really? That fella on the floor doesn't look like he's doing too well. It's okay. He was asleep, so he doesn't know he's dead yet. Mind you, when he wakes up, the shock will kill him. Please excuse me. I understand this is a grave affair. Well, you've certainly got some killer puns. Only to lift your spirits. I'm trying to put the fun back in funeral. Humour is a dying art round here. Have you been to see the hanged man? Yes, he told me that I must sacrifice my desires. That was a dead giveaway. And of course, someone needs to take care of that for you. That's where I come in. Out with the old and in with the new. But these poor people! We represent different parts of your personality. I'm your beliefs, and I'm certainly not going quietly. I'm your innocence. That's why I'm offering flowers. Remember the strength card? Right, of course. It's starting to make sense now. To be reborn, one must die first. Transformation means the end of the tired old habits, making way for something fresh. This is how we grow, fool. We must release the things that don't work for us anymore. Yeah, that's it. I'm changing. I'm becoming a new person. I can feel it. The king is dead. Long live the king. Now go forth into the world with a renewed sense of life. It's time to leave the old you behind. I will. I'm going to get straight back out there. I don't blame you. This place is dead. The fool leaves the grim surroundings and the skinny chap to carry on with his journey. To be continued. Welcome back to Kippy's Quest. This week we're talking about Fat Fighter's Dieter of the Year, Death. I think by now anyone who's looked at the tarot is aware that this card goes much deeper than the literal concept of death and mortality. Probably the most important aspect of this particular trump is change and transformation. The card follows on quite nicely from The Hanged Man, which we talked about in the last video. A change in perspective can lead to the transformation of our consciousness. If we truly surrender ourselves to life, then the death of our own self is inevitable. Paul Foster Cage says, if your pattern be built in accordance with the ideas developed through the tarot series and culminating in the self-surrender pictured by The Hanged Man, it will lead to a complete transformation of your personality. This can mean a full reworking of our understanding of reality. In much the same way that every one of the 30 trillion cells in our bodies die and are replaced every 7 to 10 years, our whole outlook and identity can die and be replaced with a nice shiny new one. Arthur Edward Waite's very brief description reads as End, Mortality, Destruction and Corruption. This is yet another card where Waite's historical divinations from the key to the tarot vary wildly from his real thoughts. Once again, we're going to need to go back and look at the full description in order to get the whole story. In the Tarot de Marseille, the card was known as Le Mans, but was never given an official title, sometimes just being called the card with no name. In that and other earlier cards, the image would be a more conventional depiction of death. However, Waite thought this was cheesy and a bourgeois form of symbolism. He said the Wade Smith version of the card was more fitly represented in the rectified tarot by one of the apocalyptic visions than by the crude notion of a reaping skeleton. Maybe he feared the reaper. A brief history of the grim reaper. The personification of death has endured through countless religions and philosophies for thousands of years, but in modern times there is perhaps no more popular representation of this figure than the classic grim reaper. The image itself originated in 14th century Europe during the outbreak of the plague. Bring out your dead! The general concept is of a skeletal character wearing a black hooded cloak and carrying a scythe. He uses this to sever the soul from the physical body of the dying so that it can be guided to the afterlife. That brief history definitely needed more cowbell. My personal favourites are Death from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey and Death from Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels. 
The Rider Waite version shows us a slightly different image of death. He's still a skeleton, but now he's wearing full armor and riding a white horse with red eyes and not a sickle or scythe in sight. In his left hand, he carries a flag emblazoned with a white rose. Waite says the mysterious horseman moves slowly, bearing a black banner emblazoned with the mystic rose, which signifies life. In Christianity, the mystic rose is the symbol of the Virgin Mary and of new life. This supports Waite's assertion that the card is equally associated with rebirth and renewal. In the background, we can see a river running. Flowing water in the tarot symbolizes active change and emotions. A boat can be seen floating along the river. According to Rachel Pollock, the boat, reminiscent of the Pharaoh's burial boats, symbolizes the true self carried through death to a new life. Whoops, wrong room. Oh no, am I gonna die? No, you'll live for another 20 years. 20 years? I'd better make the most of it. Hello world, it's time to live my best life. Sorry about that. I was trying to peel an orange. Hang on. You said I was going to live for another 20 years. Oh, sorry. I didn't recognize you. Also in the background and in between two towers, we can see what Waite describes as the son of immortality. This appears between the same two towers that feature in the moon card, who pops up at number 18 in the Major Arcana. We'll be looking at that one later in the series. In the foreground, we can see four figures, a king, a priest, a maiden, and a child. As we said in The Fool's Journey, these are thought to represent different aspects of our personality. The king in particular is symbolic of our ego in all its glory, struck down by death to make way for something new. This also illustrates that endings are inevitable for everyone, regardless of social standing. But what does it all mean? The appearance of death in a reading is universally associated with changes, but not in the same way as the Wheel of Fortune, which appears at number 10. The death card refers to finality and renewal, the transit from old to new. Waite says the veil and mask of life is perpetuated in change, transformation and passage from lower to higher. The death card is a reminder to confront our concepts of endings and to embrace new beginnings. It teaches us the importance of allowing aspects of ourselves to die so that we can evolve and grow. It is a symbol of ascension and a message of positive change that can herald a new world of exciting possibilities. What kind of music does the Grim Reaper listen to? I don't know. What kind of music does the Grim Reaper listen to? Death metal and soul. <laughs> oh dear. Death, take me now. When death appears upside down, it can be a sign of resistance to change and a stubborn insistence on sticking to old ways and habits. Weight mentions inertia, sleep, lethargy, petrification and somnambulism. Sometimes we can be fearful of change and prefer instead to stick to where we are. Rachel Pollack says this sense of a sluggish, boring life masks the sometimes desperate battle of the ego to avoid change. The card always indicates that death, with its subsequent rebirth, is not only a possibility, but also, in a sense, a necessity. Correspondence Corner! Death sits on the 24th path of the Tree of Life between Tiferet and Netzach. This is the path between beauty and victory. He corresponds to the Hebrew letter Nun, which means fish. His musical note is G natural. His corresponding herb is elderflower, and his zodiac sign is Scorpio. So there's a big difference between the negative connotations of the card and the true meaning of death in the tarot. This is most certainly not a card to be feared, but embraced. When we go through a psychological change at a fundamental level, it could be said that our old self has died to make way for the new. Paul Foster Case says, psychologically, the emphasis falls on imagination. Change your ideas and your old conception of personality dies. Thank you for tuning in to Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you a fresh start, and hopefully you'll be dying to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.